Hey there, science peeps. Uh, in today's lesson, we are going to do and learn the first part of math of chemistry. And we're gonna learn a little bit about formula mass, which is sometimes we can kind of overlay and talk about gram formula mass, or we can talk about molar mass. Really depends on if you're talking about like an individual, uh, an allotment, like a mole, like a certain amount, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that or if you're actually talking about a gram equivalent mass, something that we could physically uh, measure in class. And so what you need is your chemistry reference tables. And so we need the periodic table. And what I have here, uh, let's just see, make sure this flips correct. I have the chemistry reference table uh, picked up. And the part that we really need right now is this part right now, the atomic mass. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep it simple. We're going to use rounded atomic masses for our values. So for example, for carbon, we would use 12. Uh, I know it's hard to see here, but when you look at your reference table, it'll be, it'll be a little easier. For example, oxygen is 15.9994. We'll round that up to 16 just to make things a little simpler. And so just to keep the math easy, we're gonna, again, we'll use rounded value. So if we go back, what we need to do first, and we have two parts here, we're gonna combine formula mass, we're also gonna combine that with percent composition. And so the percent composition is basically how much of the whole one little part makes up of this. So for example, in math class, you did the formula part over whole times 100. And that's basically the same formula. And we can find that formula on the back of your reference table on table T. Um, the fourth one down is percent composition. It says uh, part of whole over part of mass times 100. So that's something that shouldn't be too distant uh, from things you've learned in the past, should be relatively familiar. Now, what we need to do is take a look at the actual atoms we're dealing with and the elements we're dealing with, the number of atoms. So again, the number, for example, the two goes after the bromine, that means there's two bromines. But when we look at the numbers here, the three and the six, the three only goes to carbon and the six only belongs to the hydrogen. So we wanna consider those when we're doing our numbers. And again, we're going to be using the periodic table and we'll go back and forth, but again, you'll be able to see it on your own. You should have that at home. Otherwise, you can try to find it online. You can actually download the whole New York State Chemistry Reference Table. You can search that on uh, online as well. So what we need to do, we need to figure out the molar mass first, then figure out the part. So the first part, we're gonna deal with bromine and what bromine's mass is, when we look at bromine on the chart, 79.9. Again, I know it's not easy to see, but over here is bromine, 79.9. We are gonna round that up to 80, okay? 79.9, but we're gonna round it up to 80. And because there are two of them, we're going to multiply that, so times two. And when we do some simple math, of course, that, of course, is 160. And so in our box over here, we would write 160. And if we're talking molar mass or if we're talking gram formula mass, we could label it grams, lowercase g. And so that would be the mass. Now, if we take a look at C3H6, if we look at each material individually, carbon is 12.011, so we're gonna call that 12, but we have three of them there, so of course that equals 36. And we multiply those together, 12 times three is 36. Hydrogen has a mass of 1.00794, so we're just gonna round that to one to keep it simple. And there are six of them, so that is gonna equal an additional six. So if we take this whole thing and we just underline it, and we get the total, the total, we're just gonna add those two up. We're gonna add all the components up together, that's gonna be 40. So my molar mass for this material for C3H6 is gonna be 40 grams. So hopefully that makes sense so far. What we're gonna do next though, and I'll come back to this, and I just wanted to show you two different examples first of how we go through the math, is to figure out the percent composition. And so with bromine, again, percent composition is part over whole times 100. If I only have one element and it only make, and that one element makes up everything, then of course it's only made of that element, it's a pure material, it's gotta be 100%. But if we were to do the math in theory, it would be 80 divided by 80, so that's my part over my whole. Again, it's kinda of hard for me to, to do the, you know, to set up the box and the uh, formatting, but basically we have our division symbol there. 
80 over 80, or 80 divided by 80, and that's going to be multiplied by 100 to convert to percent. Of course, that would be, of course, equal to 100. And so that should make sense. We would have 100% over here as far as our percentages. Because again, it's an individual material. Now, on the other end, when we look at carbon again, and we look at hydrogen, it's going to be a little bit different because now my parts are different. My whole is going to be the same for both of them. It's 40. But in the case of carbon, my part is going to be 36. I'm going to divide that by 40, my part over my whole, 36 over 40. I'm going to multiply that by 100. For the case of hydrogen, I'm going to go 6 divided by 40 and then multiply that by 100. And what we're going to do, we're going to get two percentages that at the end should add up to, of course, 100%. Because six hydrogens and three carbons make up the whole thing. So when we do our final answer, it should end up being close to 100%. Now, it might not be 100% perfect accurate at 100%. Just give us some space here. I don't screw that up too much. That's not my formatting. All right, well, we're just gonna leave it. I apologize for that. So we'll leave it here, we'll just squeeze it in and hopefully it won't make a big difference on uh, what we see over here. So just wanna make sure that my lines are lined up. Okay, when we do the math, okay, if I bring up my calculator, how you enter it, again, we're going to move this over. So if we're looking at our values, apologize for the delay here, but if we look at our values, so we have 36 and 40. So basically 36 divided by 40, and then I'm going to multiply that by 100 times 100 times 100. So what we get is 90%. So I know I have uh, 90%. I now want to look at my hydrogen. I have six divided by 40. And then again, times 100 equals 15. So notice there's an issue there. And I think I made an error, so we're gonna go back and check. I think I might've entered the wrong number. Uh, what do we got? Oh, there's my number, that, there's my mistake. Okay, now, if we notice, I did make a mistake in my math, I apologize for that. So we got 42, and we need to then change these to 42. Notice that's a good check. I, I, again, I apologize. Even I sometimes, if I'm going through too quick, I can make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes as long as we go through and we check our math. And so notice 90 plus 15 would have been 105. That would have been too much of an error. Now, sometimes if we get like 99 or 101, that's okay when we do our work because probably it could just be rounding errors because you might be rounding both of your percents. And if you don't round them correctly, you might be off by a percent, but we were off by 5%. So it's a good thing we went back and checked the math. So uh, again, maybe you recognize that. So good for you for recognizing that I did my math wrong here, but again, we caught our, our, our mistake. So let's go back and check that work. Again, let's go back. So now it's not 90%. We got to fix those percentages. And again, 36 out of 42, this will work out better. 36 divided by 42 times 100 is gonna be 85.7%. So I'm just gonna put that in there, 85.7. We'll go at least one decimal. And then we're gonna do the other six divided by 42 times 100 is gonna be equal to 14.3. We'll round this to 14.3. So we got 14.3%. And so now we have a better value. So if we carry, you know, again, that we're going to carry the one, of course, that's going to add up to 10. Carry one, nine is 10, and then nine is 10. So we end up with 100.0. So when we go over to our box, we have 85.7 and we have 14.3. Now, if you want to keep it even more simple, we could have said, for example, that this was 86, we could have rounded up to 86, and we could have rounded this one down 
to 14. That also would add up to 100. Either way we look at it, it would add up to 100. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. And again, I apologize for the math error there. Again, I'm human. When you're out of school for a while, maybe you make some mistakes, right? Okay, let's do another one. C2H5OH. Okay, this is ethanol. Uh, we may have talked about different types of alcohols. This is actually ethanol, the alcohol uh, that's in you know certain beverages that your parents may consume, especially while they're helping you homeschool. So anyways, hopefully you found a little humor in that joke. But carbon, we got some carbon. We have hydrogen and we have oxygen. Now notice I don't want to go through and write hydrogen twice. You can consider all of the hydrogens, look through the whole molecule and see how many you have. Up above, we already said carbon weighed 12. We said hydrogen up above weighed one. And oxygen, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, weighed 15.9994. Sorry about that. So we're gonna round that up to 16 for the sake of keeping things a little simple. Again, if we go to our periodic table, again, hydrogen over in the top right, 15.994. Again, no, it's hard to see, but if you have it in front of you on your own uh, periodic table, you'll see that that's a 15.9994. So we're gonna multiply 12 times two in this case, but there because there are two carbon atoms, that's gonna be 24. We're gonna multiply hydrogen by a total of six. There are five hydrogens right here, and then there's one more. So we're gonna multiply that by six, and then we're going to get our value of six. And then with oxygen, notice I have one oxygen, so of course, 16 times one is going to be 16. Pretty plain and simple. When we do all of these, we'll underline this, we're gonna come up with a total. Now we have a total, uh, 24 and six is 30, plus 16 is 46. So 46 grams in the box. Notice, lowercase, notice all materials often have different numbers for their atomic masses because they're gonna be made up of different things. The percent compositions are often going to be different, but you might notice some materials that have the same mass but a different percent composition, or they might have a different mass but the same percent composition. It really depends on the material. If the ratio of elements is the same, you're gonna have a similar percent composition, but you might have a different molar mass. So just wanna throw that out there. So when we go through, again, we have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. For the percents, again, part over whole. So now we're gonna use the values that we just calculated for the molar mass. Okay, these are my parts. 24 is the part for carbon. Six is the part for hydrogen, and 16 is the part for oxygen. The total or the whole is 46. So for oxygen, it's gonna be 24 divided by 46, and then we're gonna multiply that by 100. And when we do that math, let's see, we'll pull up our calculator here. So we have 24 divided by 46 times 100. That gives us 52.2, okay, 52.2, 52.2% when I round up. Hydrogen again, six divided by 46. We're gonna multiply that by 100. And what we get, we bring up our calculator. Again, six divided by 46 times 100. And that's gonna equal 13 point, and again, we would round this down. Remember, anytime you round, if you are gonna to go to the tenths place, you're looking at the number right after it. So because this is less than five, we're gonna keep that as a zero. So 13.0 we're gonna keep as our percent in this case. And then for oxygen, we have 16 divided by 46 we're going to multiply that by 100. And we plug that in. 16 divided by 46 times 100. And that equals 34.8. So we can round this one up. The 7, we're going to look at the 8. The 8 is higher than 5. For 5 or higher, so we're going to round that up. 34.8. So 34.8. Now, when we look at this again, maybe in your head you can't, do it as easily, but if we clear this out, we go with our numbers, again, 52.2 plus 
plus 13 plus 34.8, and notice we get exactly 100. And so that's the goal. We want to have exactly 100%. And so you would put those numbers over here, 52.2, 13.0, and 34.8 and all of these are percents again percents if you don't enter the percent uh, unit that's okay in this circumstance because there's a percent label on the top of the box already so just to give you uh, a little heads up on that so we are 15 minutes in I'm gonna cut it right there what I would like you to do, so I've done three with you, give you some examples, and you have one, two, three, four more to do. Okay, so I would like you to do the other four. Uh, this one's a, a challenge, a nice uh, thing to think about. Not so challenging as much as, you know, it's, it's you know, more difficult. There's just more parts, okay? Thing to consider again, with each piece, make sure you're looking and multiplying. Okay, so when you're looking at this, and you know if we go back and look at this this one's pretty straightforward the two goes with the h there's one sulfur and there's four hydrogens if we look at this one there's 12 carbons 22 hydrogens 11 oxygens this one's easy too one copper one iron and two sulfurs the only thing that makes this one tricky is what we need to do is consider that there are another there's another number outside the parentheses so you need to add uh excuse me multiply just like you would in math uh we're actually going to multiply the two times everything that's inside. So the copper is only three. There's three copper. So this is your hint here as you're getting this lined up. There are three coppers. But when you look at this scenario, there's a CO3 group, but there's two of them. So really that means there's two coppers total. Okay, if we look at the oxygen, two times three would be six oxygens, but there's also more oxygens over here because we got to multiply that. So there's also two more oxygens here. So two times three is six oxygens plus two more. So there's a total of eight oxygens. Okay, you have eight oxygens in this molecule. Again, I'm giving you a little hint to help you out here when you're setting it up. And then finally, two times the one hydrogen itself, there are two hydrogens. Uh, so if you've actually watched this video, you'll have the hint. If not, you might struggle a little bit more. So again, that is your task. Do those other four and then submit your answers uh, into the Google Doc or the Google assignment that's attached with this. All right, take care. If you have any questions, you can always email me again at uh, dgardner at solveschools.org. You can hit us up at the Remind, which was in the email from uh, this week. And you can also respond through Google, uh, basically the Google Classroom. All right, take care and uh, stay healthy. We'll talk to you soon.